Okay, everybody, I don't know if you remember a very recent tutorial that if you picked up an acorn and came over to use it in a game, you would become invisible. Now, instead of using a button uh, to become invisible, we are going to detect whether or not somebody is carrying something to make them invisible in the game. This is a kind of a neat effect. It's been it's been widely requested that instead of that, how about if you're just holding something? Anyway, so let's get into UAFN and verse and find out how to do this. Okay, so we are inside of UAFN, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to have another item spawner. So we've got an acorn spawner here. I'm just going to select it, hold the Alt key down, and move it over one so that we have another item spawner. And inside of here, we want to have something that we can actually hold in our hands. Now, I think the easiest thing to use is a card. So let's grab, uh, let's grab the authority card. It's kind of a fun one. And this is going to be something that we're able to hold in our hands so that when we're holding this, we become invisible. So the only other device that we're going to need is inside of the devices and we'll find a conditional button and we'll just drag that up and put it next to it. We don't need to see it or use it. So we're going to hide it with the details panel and we will look down into here where it says visible during game and we'll just put no. So that means it just won't be visible in the game or usable. And instead, we are going to call it with verse. So save that and then let's head down into verse. OK, so we are inside of verse now and we're going to set up um, an editable for our card detector. So we'll go card detector and we are going to just have it be a conditional button, which we have right here. So we'll just copy and paste and that will instantiate the conditional button to be able to use from our scene into our code. So before we go any further, save build, which I just press control shift B and it builds the verse file. And we want to select our game manager. And if you don't have a game manager on your scene, you haven't done the first tutorial, then it's going to live inside of creative devices, game manager, drag it onto your scene, then select it. And inside of the details panel, our editable is going to show up card detector. And we're going to select whichever conditional button it was, but I don't remember which one it was. So we're going to have to select this, go into our outliner, find it, and we're going to call this card detector, right? Just like that. So then we go back to our game manager and then we select card detector here and then pick our object inside of our outliner, which is that. And then you're done the stuff that is going to happen on the stage here. So let's go in verse. Now that we've got this conditional button set up, we want to copy this for now. And we're going to go into our on begin function. The on begin runs when the game starts up one time. And we want to run a loop on a bit of a timer that says, hey, check everybody, check everybody. And on that check, it's going to say, hey, is this player holding a card? And if so, let's make them invisible. If they're not holding it, then make them visible. So let's do our loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to go spawn, uh, check for card, call it whatever you want. If you're wondering what spawn does and what we're doing here, let's let's make the function really quickly. So we'll go check for card and then we're going to do suspends because this is going to do things on a timer. It's going to stop things and then do things and stop things and do things. So that's suspense. It's an asynchronous event or an asynchronous thread that runs in the game. You can think of asynchronicity as if, say, you were a bartender and you were making drinks or something like that, and you wanted somebody to bring ice, but regularly, every five minutes, bring me a bag of ice. But it doesn't mean that you make a drink and then they do it. You're just telling them, hey, bring me ice every five minutes or so. That makes them an asynchronous actor or object in the situation. You're making stuff, they're doing things. So that's what we're doing here. We go spawn, check for card, which means we're just kind of doing it all the time while the game's running. So the first thing we need to do is sleep. So it's going to sleep for one second. During that one second, nothing happens. After that one second passes, we're going to go through the list of players and we're going to check what they've got in their hands. So the way that we can do that is we grab our list of players. We go all players. We say uh, colon equals get play space. And then inside of get play space, we go get players like that. And that will give us back a list of all the players that are in the game. So then we can go for player, all players. And this is where our loop is happening. So every second, it's going to do this loop of going through all of our players. Then we want to find out how to make the conditional button do the thing we want to do. We want to see what that is. So we'll control click conditional button device, which will take us into Fortnite Digest.verse. And we can see all the functions that the conditional button device has. 
And if we scroll a little ways down, we can see this one called is holding item. And this requires an agent to be passed into it. And we also want to take note that it is a decides function. Let's copy this is holding item. And we're going to go down to our function here of check for card. And inside this for, we're just going to copy in is holding item because we then we need card detector. I like to copy and paste function names and object labels or names because it reduces the amount of typos that I have. So we'll just copy that hit period. And then because this is a decides, we want to use square brackets and then we need to pass in the agent. And also because it's a decides, we have to do if, wrap it in an if statement. Now we're not done yet, we still need the agent. So to get the agent, we have to cast this player object to an agent object. So to do that, we're going to do another if statement and we'll go if is agent and it's an agent object equals agent player. So we're taking the player object and say, hey, turn this into an agent object because it's in there. We can get it colon and then we'll bring this other one back to the right tab space because tab spacing is vital in this. So that means that we have the agent of the player. So we'll copy that, right? Copy that again, place that in, squigglies go away. So if the player or the agent, which is the player, is holding the item that lives inside of the conditional button, which we haven't finished setting up yet, but we will, uh, then do a thing. So we will head down to our function that we've already created in our last tutorial, and that is make player invisible. Paste it in here and then paste is agent into the brackets here. And that will make the player invisible at the time. And then if not go else, we want to show the player. So we'll show player. And that is going to be a function that we will make right now. So we'll just head down to the make player invisible. I like to group my functions together that are related. Show player agent and it is an agent object that we're going to pass in colon equals. And then we're going to grab. We have to manipulate the fort character. So we're going to grab the fort character like this and then we'll just go for FC show. So then we'll just copy and paste in FC show. And that is that function complete. So let's head up to see what's going on here. It says there's a squiggly, there's a problem because we're not passing in the agent and we need to because that's how we define the last functions. We'll pass in is agent. And the last thing we need to do is set up the conditional button because it's going to detect what the player is holding. So head over into the details panel for the card detector and we're going to click this little list here and we can search up card and we're going to grab the authority key card. And this means that the conditional button will say, does the player have this item in their hands? Or you can even have it just in their inventory or you can actually you can actually detect if they have it at all. It's pretty handy. OK, and then the very last thing that we need to do is turn this check for card function into a loop that just endlessly goes. We don't want to forget that. So very last thing to do is go loop colon then take all of this stuff and do that. OK, I'll be honest, I gave this uh, a go, but just as I was about to give it a go, I realized that we're going to be running this function over and over again every second for as long as they're holding it. So we actually don't want to do that. So we're going to make a different function here and it's going to be called hide player. And we're going to do the same thing that we've got here, except we're going to just put hide. And this this is good. This is not perfect because we're essentially calling show or hide every second on a player as they're in the game. So ideally we would make a custom player object. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I think this is going to be just fine. I doubt it. They probably already do a test somewhere in the uh, in the back end. So our check for card should have hide player and show player. Now I've only made changes inside of verse here. So I'm going to build this and then we'll come to the top and click push verse changes. And now inside of the game, I've also put some print statements so we can see we're not holding something. We're still not holding something. And then when we select over to it, we disappear. Just like that. And if we let it go, then we reappear. So that's how you would make a player disappear or reappear based on if they are holding something. It's kind of a handy little function to do and uh, could be useful for some people out there. So hopefully that's been interesting and I will see you guys in the next one.